Hi everybody, and today I want to talk about The Mule. Uh, the Mule is a really interesting Australian film. Normally, a film like The Mule, it might get a screening at, say, MIF or the smaller film festivals. It might get a small sort of theatrical distribution, say, you know, you would play at the Nova or something in Melbourne, and then it just it would disappear, and it would probably make about thirty or 40000 at the box office, and you really wouldn't hear about it again. And it's that kind of film. It's this sort of small... It's a very disposable sort of film if you want to think about it. But the thing about The Mule and why it's a really interesting film and why it's actually become a film that other other um, exhibitors and distributors are looking to as a way forward is the fact that it didn't have a theatrical distribution. What happened is this film went straight to iTunes. Now, the interesting thing about The Mule is it did really well. It was the top of the iTunes charts um, for the first couple of weeks and it made great business, both in Australia and both internationally, and it avoided the theatrical distribution. So what I want to talk about with The Mule is really the whole idea of the small screen, and actually should Australian films be utilising the small screen through things like video on demand better than they currently are? So often when we think of the small screen, where we think of it as a redundant form of the big screen. So what you really want to do is you want to see your film on the big screen, and then after that, if you can't see it, then you sort of reduce yourself to see it on the small screen. And what the mule is essentially um, putting forward and sort of asking is, do we actually have to see films on the big screen? And what if we don't actually see films on the big screen? Now, the problem with an Australian cinema that, say, doesn't have to be seen on the big screen is often it can create a really negative impression of the cinema that it's it's not really a it's not really cinema at all of what it's doing and it's kind of it's just a bit shitty and i think that's a real problem so it can't be you know one or the other but there needs to be a, a greater variation so a film like the the mule which is sort of a small film it's not going to do well on the big screen because essentially you don't have to see a film like the mule on the big screen but other films, say your Mad Max or uh, Samson Delilah or The Babadook, you know, really cinematic films, they absolutely, in my opinion, need to be seen on the big screen. So it's kind of thinking about the sort of film that you're making and thinking about where is the best place for that to go to. Now, seeing a film on the big, on the small screen, and let's face it, I just want to sort of put this out here. Most of us are watching Australian films not on big screens. Most of us are watching Australian films on small screens and there's a problem with exhibition that what happens with an exhibitor has an obligation to play the film for seven consecutive days and then that's it. Then the film can actually disappear and it can go and it's actually really hard to see an Australian film. If you don't see an Australian film in the first couple of days of its theatrical release, it's actually really difficult to see it and I want to talk about that. Now there are advantages to a seeing a film on a small screen. And these advantages very basically are mobility, right? You can be mobile, you can be on the move to watch a film. You know, you don't actually have to go to the cinema to see it. It's, it's at your access whenever you want to access it. Uh, it's not competing for space in the cinema. And this has become a real problem, especially with the big blockbusters coming from Hollywood. I mean, if you go to the multiplex now, you will see a number of big blockbusters. And But the problem is... They're not as many. There aren't actually as many blockbusters that you actually think there are. The problem is what the cinemas are doing is, say, they're looking at Transformers. And they're not just putting Transformers in one cinema. They might be putting Transformers in you know, eight of its cinema simultaneously. And that's actually blocking space for the smaller films to play. And that's become a real problem. Um, watching a film on a small screen or video on demand, it's always available. And that's, again, like I was saying, it's a real problem for Australian films. There is something else about the small screen experience, the small screen film watching experience. And I want us to really think about that. You know, how is our experience um, different and unique when watching something on a small screen? I would argue that the mule has been embraced and accepted because we're not actually going out and paying 25 bucks a ticket to see the mule. We're paying a couple of dollars to download it and watch it. And watching a film on a smaller screen, it does lower expectations. We don't, it's not like a night out where you're, you know, it's Saturday night, you're going out with a couple of friends or a date or something, you paid 50 bucks just to get into the cinema, and suddenly you're wanting 
a big experience, something to actually take home as a story. And a, f a film like The Mule isn't going to do that, all right? But if you actually watch it on your small screen, say you're watching it on, um, you know, your computer or your phone, like going into work, you might actually think, hey, this is actually a pretty kind of enjoyable film. So you sort of got to think about what films would actually work in that forum and what wouldn't. Um, it also, clearly, there is a lower cost um, if you're watching something on a small screen. Now, there's a lower cost as far as like the ticket price go. You can essentially download most new films for about five bucks. Also, for the budget, if you actually think about the way that the film was actually put together, there is a the budget is actually reduced if you're if you're making something for a small screen as opposed to a big screen. Now here you have so this is the mule. This is um, a website called Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if you've heard about Rotten Tomatoes. But basically, you get you get a tomato, you get a splat, all right. And you, if you get a tomato, tomato is basically it's well received, and a splat is it hasn't been well received. It's kind of a fun website, and they have a lot of the reviews um, of the film like globally. Now. If you actually look at this, so 85% of critical um, reviews, right, were really positive, like really positive of the film. And audience score was about 70%. So 70% of the people surveyed liked the film. So uh, the, um, the audience survey, 3.6 out of 5, and the critical survey was 6.7 out of 10. Now, what I would say is the mule would not have had that sort of positive response had it played at the cinema. And I just sort of, I want to put it out to you and I want you to think about that when you're watching the film. You know, how does your, actually, how does your experience actually change when you're watching something on the small screen? Now, mobile screens are part of the film experience and when we're talking about the film experience, we, we're not just talking about paying your 25 bucks at Hoyt or Village and going and watching the film and then leaving it there. Your film experience is all the hype, all the buzz, where you first hear about the film, the conversations you may be having about the film before you see it, and then the conversations that you're having after the film. And it's not just it's not just the conversation doesn't happen, you see the film, then you go and have a coffee with a friend and you discuss the film. Often you're on social media talking about the film, all right? And this is the whole thing. When we're engaging with a film, right, beyond just watching the film, we're often engaging with it through the mobile screen. And I don't mean mobile as in a mobile phone. It can mean that, but also mobile as in a small screen that is actually mobile. So if you think about where do you watch the trailers for a film, often on your small screen. Interviews with cast and crew is often seen on a small screen. Social media, obviously, on a small screen. Even reviews. Often we're reading reviews on a small screen. So it does make sense that the film is also watched within this screen space and form. And if you think about the mule, it's not trying to break away from that, saying, okay, well, you've seen all of that on the small screen, now go and pay and see it on the big screen. It's actually saying it's going to be part of that package and it's going to be part of that. So if you look at the, the mule, so online and social media have been a part of its campaign and they've made it very clear that this is a small screen experience. All right. Now the film did it did a couple of big screens, but it was really just for um, you know for a, a couple of sort of Q and A things and things like that that they were doing. But it really it didn't get a a, a, um, a big screen exhibition. Now what happened with the mule is they did so Angus Sampson did some live Twitter sessions where you could you know directly ask An Angus uh, questions about the film, and they kept the mule apart from these couple of screenings um, at the Nova, I think it was in Melbourne. Apart from those, they kept it as a very small screen idea and concept. And that was the whole thing about the film. And what's really interesting about The Mule, it was made for that idea. And they knew right from the start when they were developing the story of where it was going to play and how it was going to play. And that's different, I think, to a lot of Australian films. There is a criticism for Australian films that they don't think about exhibition and distribution until after the film had been made. And here is a film saying... We don't care about theatrical exhibition. What we care about is the small screen experience. Now, there's been a pushback from theatrical um, exhibitors in the past sort of year or so. Basically, you might sort of say, okay, if Village are playing films at the big cinema, why don't they actually go into the video on demand market? And why wouldn't they do that? Well, the fact is... The 55% of revenue for exhibitors, theatrical exhibitors, so your Hoitzers, your village, it's made from the candy bar. 
right? So only a small proportion, 45% of actually their revenue is from the ticket stubs. Where you, where all of their revenue is coming from is what you're actually buying with your ticket. So your big tub of popcorn and your Coke and you know all of that. So it's really important for them to not lose this market, not actually lose the cinema going market to video on demand. So what they're actually doing is now they're fighting back and they're trying to stop films from going direct to video on demand. So a big story that's coming out last year is they're doing Crouch and Tiger Hidden Dragon Part 2. It seems a long time since Part 1. I think it was 2001 Part 1. So basically Netflix, IMAX and the Weinstein Company are upending traditional release patterns for movies by debuting um, a new Crouch and Tiger film simultaneously in theatres and on streaming platforms. So it's a bit different to The Mule where The Mule didn't actually open on in theatres, it just opened on video on demand. Now, ACM Entertainment, the largest IMAX theatre operator in the world, is the latest exhibitor to reject Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And what they're actually saying is, no, 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 you're not going to do that. You're not going to give audiences an option and an opportunity to either download the film or video on demand at the same time of seeing the film theatrically. And this is the whole thing with the theatrical exhibitor. The theatrical exhibitor, right, what they want is a nice window where the film comes out and then you can't, you don't have another opportunity of seeing that film for a couple of months down the road. And I'll talk about that in a second. So what this is saying and the reason why there's been a pushback is that video on demand is now a major competitor in the, uh, the exhibition tradition. And I think that's really important um, to realise that video on demand is not, it's not sort of a secondary form now. It's actually people are really interested in video on demand and what you can actually do as part of film exhibition. Now, if you look at this, I think this is kind of interesting. Uh, so this is from Screen Australia, this graph. And this is the video on demand market is growing, as I was just saying. Now, so if you look at the top bar, so this is, like, this is people um, surveyed who go to the cinema. All right, to actually go to the movies. Now, 6% of people surveyed right, go to the movies weekly. Right? But if you actually look down to the video on demand bars, the online rentals is exactly the same. So 6% of people surveyed go to the movies once a week. And if you actually look at the proportion of graphs, now going to the movies is bigger than video on demand, but the proportion of each one is pretty much on par with um, the theatrical exhibition. So, you know, people who go once or twice a year is 21% for the people who go to the cinema, but online rental is about 9%. So why this is scary for the theatrical exhibitor is that video on demand is growing and theatrical exhibition is actually shrinking. And you, if we look back at this graph in a couple of years, or an updated graph, I reckon that video on demand would almost be on par with theatrical exhibition. And that's really interesting of what's actually going on. So what producers are now thinking is that there's other ways of making money from your movies than just theatrical exhibition. And this is an exciting time, I would say, to be part of the, the cinema industry. It's not a negative time. And theatrical exhibitors really need to get you know, need to sort of stop competing with video on demand and actually think about how can that be integrated into their um, into their business. And I'll talk about that in a sec. So the reason why things would go straight to video on demand is basically this. We're in a global, international world now. And the fact is we want to see films um, at the same time that other countries see it. But it's not always the case. So if you look at this graph, so on the, the blue bar, uh, sorry, on the uh, the other bar, the top bar, so if you look at NOAA, so that's basically, the this is the cinema delay into Australia. All right, so NOAA opens a day before in Australia than it does in America. Um, Rio opens, right, 83 days after America into Australia. So Australia has to wait 83 days but then the bottom graph, the bottom bar is really interesting. So this is the DVD delay from when the film opens, right? So Noah, for example, this is a film with Russell Crowe, which came out last year. It's terrible. Don't bother watching it. But anyway, it comes into Australia a day before America and then it opens, right? So you can sort of say it's a global um, release. But then 
Australians have to wait 57 days before they can access the film digitally or on DVD. Now, this is the reason why people are downloading, because they want to see the film. All right, so what's actually happening is there's a window for the exhibitor, and the exhibitor don't want any other way of seeing the film. They want to control where you see the film for two to three months. And what a film like The Mule is doing is saying we actually want to give people instant access to this film and instant availability to the film. So it's really important for those films, a film like The Mule, that they don't actually lose business through the time where it takes from the theatrical distribution to the so the DVD distribution. And the problem is, say you do all of this marketing into the theatrical distribution, if you have to wait two or three months before the film comes out on DVD, there's a good chance people have forgotten about it. So this is why... Um, a number of producers are really trying to bypass the whole theatrical uh, distribution and just seeing what's going on there. Like a film like Under the Skin, which is at the bottom of the graph here, so it's opened 55 days after America, and then another 92 days Australia has to wait for to see it on DVD, which I just think is just ludicrous. It's ludicrous if you actually think about social media and social media being so immediate so what's happening is people are going on social media and say they're hearing about a film of Under the Skin. Well, they're not seeing it for another two months in Australia and then they've got to wait another three months after that to see it on DVD. <clears throat> so something has to change and Video On Demand seems to offer that solution. Now, uh, polymedia, this is the term. So the, the definition of polymedia is the concurrent use of mobile screens with other screens. So it's basically when you're doing one thing with a screen, you've got another screen in your hand. All right? So one survey found that 80% of Australian smartphone users use their phone to access the internet while doing other things. So 48% of people when they're watching TV are doing, are basically, you know, looking at the internet through their mobile phone. 29% of people who go to the movies use their mobile phones. Now, the whole thing is that the theatrical um, exhibitors are trying to rebel against this. You know, they say, turn off your mobile phones, and I would say turn off your mobile phones because it's fucking distracting for everybody else who's trying to watch the movie and they've got somebody on their phone. But that's not the point. The point is that we're in a world where people are using multiple screens at the same time. And should we be incorporating that into our experience of watching a movie rather than rebelling against it? And I want to really think through that, this whole idea of what we can actually do with that mobile screen. And maybe it should be a way of, you know, watching the movie. And what I'm, the sort of question I'm putting out to you is what if viewers were encouraged to use their phones during a cinema screening? Now, you may think that's a crazy statement, but in China, there are, cinema, there are particular cinema screenings where you can go and you're encouraged to be commenting on the film as the film is playing. And what happens is it goes onto Twitter. So basically, say a film opens... It starts at sort of 8 o'clock Saturday night. So what you're encouraged to do is you go to the movie and the film starts simultaneously around the country at 8 o'clock and everybody's on their mobile and they're basically commenting on the film as the film is playing. Like, oh, you know, did you just see that car crash or I can't believe that person fell in love with that other person, you know, all of this. So you're basically commenting directly on the film and everybody around the country is actually commenting back. So you're having this conversation on your mobile phone as the film is actually playing on the big screen. Now, you may say, hang on, that's actually not watching a movie. That's actually looking at your mobile phone and kind of following a plot, which isn't actually watching a movie. You may be against it, but the fact is these screenings in China are going gangbusters. Everybody's really excited, and it's giving people a way of engaging with the movie because that's how they use their screens. Right? So it's actually it's not saying go to the movies and turn off your phone. It's actually saying go to the movies and actually use your phone as a positive way. Now, you may think it's terrible, but you could say that what it's actually encouraging people to do is go to the movies and engage with what's happening on the screen in a way that maybe they weren't engaging with anyway. So it's actually it's it's not about the passive viewer. It's actually about the active viewer. Now... Do I endorse this? Well, 
Not really, but if you've got particular screenings where this is encouraged and you know going to those screenings, maybe it's actually not such a bad idea. So we can talk about that. Now, the problems of the video on demand and mobile screens. The majority of poor consumers across the world still struggle to afford advanced small screens. Right? So if you're saying to everybody, right, this is how we're going to watch a screen, we're not going to supply you the screen anymore, because that's essentially what you do when you play it, pay your box office money, you, you, you're supplied a screen. You know, go into that room, there's a big screen waiting for you. Right? There's also a problem with the bandwidth and internet connection. Right? Unless you've got the latest model of technology and you've got good internet, it's really, really difficult to engage with the 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 um the film experience because you need that technology and small screens essentially they exclude and they for force a purchase of exhibition technology now this is the thing about the movies and thing we need to make really clear movies have always been about selling technology it's not about selling love or selling a star it's about selling technology so the whole thing about say 3ds 3d movies what what that's really about is exhibitors buying all the equipment so if you actually see all the say the 3d technology it's all tied to the to the companies who are actually making 3d movies all right so it's all about selling technology now what i'm putting out there is shouldn't produce a suppliers with the technology to pay for their product so if say iphone or itunes Right, they want us to be paying for iTunes and using iTunes, and you know, don't buy movie DVDs anymore, and don't buy CDs. Just you know, download everything straight from iTunes. Okay, sounds great, but shouldn't you be supplying me <coughs> with the technology to do that? Like, why should I be paying the technology to do that? When I go to the movies, I'm not expected to bring my own screen with me to watch the movie. You're supplying that for me, so it's a bit of a if you actually think about it, I mean, this is a whole battle that's actually happening right at the moment with exhibitors and distributors. Exhibitors are saying to the distributors, hang on, if you want us to play all of your movies, then you need to meet us halfway and you need to actually either pay 50% of the technology you want us to install, like 3D technology, or actually do something. We need to come up with a different model here because we can't just afford everything based on what you want to push. And, it, you know, it's a crazy idea to think you're just going to be supplied an iPhone but if you actually think about what iTunes are asking us to do, or Apple are asking us to do, it's actually not so crazy. Now, has fitching content for mobile screens simply become fitching content? And what, I, what I'm saying here is how much of the storytelling being consumed by mobile devices is truly unique to that platform. When we think of the big movies, say like your Gravity or something like that, it's made for the big screen. It doesn't really work on a small screen. It because it's such a big screen experience. The question is, are films that are watched on the small screen and you know released on the small screen, are they being made uniquely for the small screen? So Crouching Tiger, like Hidden Tree, is that made really for the small screen? Or is it just that, oh, well, we're playing on the small screen because we don't want to actually pay the, the fees for the theatrical distribution? So it, it's sort of a problem, and I think this is why the, the Mule is such a good example, because the Mule is certainly made for the small screen. And perhaps a more Australian film should actually be thinking about this as a viable option rather than, you know, trying for the theatrical distribution and actually losing a lot of money. Now, is the variation to how we consume on different platforms considered enough? And that's really the question I'm putting out to you. So watching Gravity on a laptop is a redundant form of watching that film. Watching the mule at the IMAX would be why on earth would you do that? Like it's actually, it's actually you get more from the mule watching on a small screen than actually watching it at the IMAX. And I think we need to be thinking about that. What I really like to see is say a film like Gravity come out and say, you know what, this is not going to get a theatrical, it's not going to get a DVD release, it's not going to get a digital release. You can only see this at the movies because that's where the film was made. Or Mad Max, you know, Fury Road, a film just for the cinema. And then other films like The Mule, you know, just for the small screen. Why can't we do that? Why does it? Why do we have to go down this tradition of it opens at the cinema and then it goes into the small screen? Watching Gravity on the small screen, you're not going to get the kick that you would get watching on the big screen. So thinking exhibition as a means of production. All right. So Angus Sampson is known for TV. So The Mule would be different had it starred somebody like Russell Crowe, had it starred a movie star, a cinema star. Angus Sampson, he's... He's known for his TV, 
right? And that's the thing. So the thing about the mule, everything about it is about the small screen, the TV screen, you know, the, the mobile screen. So the mule works on small screens because it isn't cinematic. That's the whole thing. It seems like TV. So if you watch the film, you've got brighter lighting, you've got closer shots, simple editing, minimal action, and interior sets. This is all set up for TV. So think about that. Think about TV production compared to cinema production. Cinema production is a lot more exterior and, you know, of course, cinematic. You know, think of Mad Men, where you don't actually get any exterior shots for the entire show at all. Right, and that's why the that's why the mule works really well. Now, compare the mule to say the Babadook. Now, the Babadook is a very interior kind of film, but the Babadook is actually very cinematic. And actually, think about what the like the lighting of the of the Babadook and the way that they use the camera. It's very cinematic, even though it's set in a basically in within a house. But the mule is very very. It seems like television when you watch it, and to watch. The mule on the big screen, it wouldn't actually look that good. It actually would look better and sharper on a small screen. So why the mule on small screens makes sense? Uh, well, most Australian films are watched on small screens, like I said. Uh, case in point, local films, so The Babadook, Galore, Charlie's Country and Canopy are also on the bestsellers list on iTunes, like this week, which I think is really interesting that here you've got a number of Australian films that don't actually do well um, through theatrical exhibition but they've done really well on iTunes so what's actually going on with that clearly Australians want to watch Australian films but it's really hard to access Australian films and iTunes should actually be giving more access to Australian films than they currently are it's actually really difficult still to see a lot of Australian films on iTunes now uh, most frequently downloaded Australian films via peer-to-peer -peer torrent services was the Sapphires, right? So this is, we're talking now illegal downloading. The Sapphires was downloaded 4,101 times a day. Now, coming in at number five, or 95, sorry, was 100 Bloody Acres, right, with 1,929 downloads a day. Now, this is a film that absolutely bombed at the, the box office in Australia. It didn't do well, but in between... Right, the cinema exhibition ending and the DVD distribution starting, which is a couple of months, 100 Bloody Acres was getting 1,929 downloads a day. What is that telling you about something? Australians want to see the film. They haven't got access to it, so make it available instantly. Now, this is another film with um, um, Angus Sampson, so there's something about Angus Sampson and the small screen. Now, The Mule as small screen sto story is interesting, and again, it works as TV. If you actually think of the drug mule screen story, right? they're generally television stories. So Bangkok, um, Bangkok Hilton with uh, Nicole Kidman did really well. Uh, it was a film quite some time ago. Uh, Chappelle, which was out, was it last year or the year before, which is a terrible miniseries. Shocking. God. Oh. Anyway. Um... And the mule sort of comes as part of that package. So why would you make a film about drug mules on the cinema screen when most of Australians are actually used to seeing the mule as a small screen, or sorry, the, the drug mule as a small screen experience? Now, within the mule, and it actually they work it within the plot, and that's the whole thing about the TV and the small screen, the film is bracketed by shots of a television displaying footage related to the 93 America's Cup. And... The thing about the mule, which is interesting, is the mule is like doing nothing and watching TV are kind of one and the same. So the TVs, televisions are very much integrated into the story and actually look at, you know, where he actually, you know, hides the drugs and things like that. Um, you know, televisions again become really crucial to the plot. So just some final questions to, to consider. Is the mobile screen a redundant form of the big screen? Like, do you actually think that? And do you actually think a film like The Mule is better off being watched on the small screen as opposed to the big screen? Does the mobile screen have its advantages? What if viewers were encouraged to use their phones during a cinema screening? And are you just like, you know, is, you, is your heading your hands just with the idea of it or is there actually something in that and could we actually do more with the smaller screens uh, is the variation to how we consume the same content on different platforms considered enough and i think that's really important to consider you know when a film is being developed australian films being developed should they be thinking more readily about 
this film is probably more suited to the small screen. And the thing about TV now, TV is so cool and trendy. I actually don't think there's that stigma anymore of you actually making something directly for the small screen. More can be done with what we're actually doing with the small screen. And certainly theatrical exhibition shouldn't be the first place and the mandatory place for Australian films to stop. And also, would you like to see all films released simultaneously on video on demand? And would that stop you going to the movies? I would say I don't think it would stop you going to the movies. I think the, the thing about the cinema is it's still a social experience and people still like going to the movies. When videos came in, all right, in the sort of the 70s, everyone said, oh, people stopped going to the movies. Nobody stopped going to the movies. So for some films, video on demand works. And for some films, they want to see the, the on the big screen. And I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoy The Mule. And there's a lot to talk about with this film and also the current stage of film exhibition in Australia on the big screen and also the small screen.